Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather next 10 to 14 days, but today's second video, day 10, is going to take us to the 17th of March. We'll be able to extend out beyond that with extended GFS and ECM ensembles because they run to around a couple of weeks. And we'll have a look at CFSV2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. And that's going to get us uh, to the beginning of April. I shall get on with that for you in a moment. Just say that first video release is our uh, 6M upload. So please check out that video if you'd like to do that. Please like, share, subscribe on videos. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. We're going to begin with stratospheric developments. So look at this. Warming is continuing at 10 HPA over the uh, North Pole. We have now lifted the temperature up to around minus 30. Uh, at this point in early March, we should be down here around minus 55 to minus 53, something like that. So we're now significantly warmer than average. It's still not reaching the threshold of a sudden stratospheric or in terms of what the temperature is doing, although it has split by the vortex and its roots in the stratosphere, uh, I believe, over the past uh, day or so. Um, so, yeah, significant warming of the stratosphere taking place at 10 HPA, and uh, that's probably going to carry on over the next couple of days. It'll probably then level up, but we may get another warming into the second half of uh, March. More about that in a moment. Going a little bit lower down to 30 HPA. Look at this. Very significant developments there as well. Through most of this winter, we've been under minus 80. We're now here, though. So, uh, you know, proper warming warming going on at uh, both levels at 10 and also 30 HPA and uh, temperatures are now warmer than average at both levels of the stratosphere which is a position we haven't been in since around here like at the end of October into the beginning of November so really dramatic developments stratosphere wise again that uh, the lift of the temperature is falling short of a sudden stratospheric warming but nevertheless this is a significant development it's going to be sustained it's going to uh, just it has split the polar vortex i think they say over this weekend also going to be a displacement of the polar vortex so it's roots in the stratosphere and a renewed warming could well be the killing blow of the polar vortex and, and give us a reversal of zonal winds going to have a very weakening very dramatic weakening of zonal winds anyway over next week or so but in the longer term like a reversal of zonal winds into second half of march is quite likely i'll show you the reason why so this is how things are currently looking in terms of the temperature 10 hp this is the latest gfs forecast from metro seal.fr these blue colors they've been displaced from the arctic pole into northern europe and uh, western parts of russia by these green and uh, yellow colors so again this isn't uh, like certain stratospheric warming uh, temperature requirement is going to the red colors on the scale we haven't gone that far but it's enough of a warming to to really displace this uh, polar vortex and lift the temperature up at both levels of the actually now what happens over the next week or so so those blue because albeit in a moderated form, do come back. So in the next week, so we'll probably get the temperature dropping a little bit again at 10 HPA. But polar vortex is trying to reorganise itself, trying to come back with these cold uh, temperatures. But then what happens as we get into uh into around day 10 we get a renewed warming occurring right over pole itself and this is really reached the requirement of a sudden stratospheric warming i think so uh, a very significant warming strategy event takes place right over the top of the pole as we go into the third week of march i reckon that will be like the killing blow for the polar waters where it is still in business to some degree if these blue colors here displacing to northern europe nevertheless i reckon that would be like enough to properly reverse uh, send zonal winds into reverse and, uh, and that would really be a hammer blow to the polar vortex um, then so uh, significant warming going on right now levels off uh, in around a week's time and then around day 10 or so that warming comes back and intensifies around day 10 and 14 over the pole itself very significant development. Could this be setting up blocking for the end of March and particularly for April? Could be set up northern blocking for April? Let me know in the comments what you think. It would be typical, wouldn't it, after a mild winter, snow this winter, if we start getting cold weather and maybe some snow into, into April. We'll see. Right, central in temperature is standing at 6.0. That is 1.4 degrees above average. That is provisional to yesterday to the 6th of March. So that's come down quite a bit over the uh, past few days, of course. These are the GFS upgrade temperature 
and precipitation ensembles in the next of Birmingham today. Red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Birmingham. We're starting off a little bit below average at the moment. Upper air temperatures will lift up through this week. It is going to become milder. And then into the middle to second half of March, we're pretty close uh, to average then, to be honest. Probably still a little bit on the milder than average side, but not, not a big deviation. Have got some very mild outliers, though, particularly the GFS control run, this blue line up here really lifts off and becomes quite warm. So we might turn things warm into the middle of uh, March, but I think more reliably, just generally keeping uh, what we've had uh, in terms of temperatures. Precipitation-wise, quite a bit of dry weather the next two or three days, and it starts getting more unsettled uh, later on this week and into weekend, into the beginning of next week as well. Second half of March also looks a little bit on the mixed side. Let's see if anything's happening with a snow row, not much, just maybe a little bit around the 17th, but um, not much going on there with snow row for Birmingham. Two metre temperatures look like that. So starting off quite chilly at the moment. They are going to lift up through this week and then perhaps drop a little bit uh, into next weekend. Then quite close to average sea level pressure is looking like this. So um, at the moment, we're starting off around here, relatively high pressure. Pressure will be dropping this week. we get some quite low pressure, then maybe lifting up again into the second half of March. Temperature anomaly should be 7th to the 15th of March are coming out close to, or a little bit above, average for England and Wales anyway. Precipitation anomalies uh, from the 7th to 15th of March, largely on the wet of an average side, particularly so for Ireland, England, Wales, Northern Scotland, looks a bit drier. Basically, wind flow map from Earth, northfuel.net shows up with pulling in like an east or southeasterly flow uh, today. That wind will turn increasingly southerly over the next few days, and it will start to turn quite a lot milder uh, later on in the week. Okay, should we start going through some chart data then? Let's do that show. This is how you can make Euro. It's looking for midnight on Thursday. There'll be a weather system in the northwest. That could bring quite a bit of rain, but we are pulling up wind in a southerly direction, so that should be quite mild. Into the end of the week of the weekend, we keep further low pressure coming in off the Atlantic. That will bring spells of rain. By early next week, that low pressure will begin to slip southwards to northern parts of Spain and start to become cut off of the coast of Spain and Portugal. That might be the size of uh, pressure beginning to rise um, through the middle part of the We'll have to wait and see uh, about that. But sometimes when, sometimes when these low pressures slip south and become cut off, we get a dip in the jet stream, basically. It can allow uh, heights pressure to rise uh, behind the low or to the north of the low. Uh, this is how ICON is looking again. Uh, weather system coming in off the Atlantic on Thursday. That bring quite a bit of rain with it into southerly winds and wet and windy weather into Friday. And then more low pressure coming in off the Atlantic through the weekend and into the early part of next week. Again, you see that low pressure slipping southwards, becoming a cut-off low around Spain. will bring some very useful rain to Spain, by the way. Some very heavy rain and thunderstorms likely there with this low pressure. Notice heights beginning to rise to both the west and also the east of that area of high pressure. It's might of that low pressure, should say. Um, so that might allow some high pressure to build in through the middle and second half of the month. Let's pick things up with the GFS midnight run. Again, where the system in off the Atlantic on Thursday will bring quite a rain with it. Will be mild, though. Winds are in from a south southwest direction. And more low pressure piling in off the Atlantic next weekend. Low pressure rain slips southwards, becomes cut off off the coast of Portugal. Pressure rising to the north of that low, or trying to anyway. Takes a while, but through next week, the trend is towards higher pressure to build in from both the west and also up to the northeast as well. So we finish up just beyond day 10, which is the 18th of March, with high pressure taking over across the country and over Scandinavia, pulling wind into the east. So we get easy winds setting up just to beyond day 10. Only thing is, they're not particularly cold easterly, easterly winds. So, you know, very typical of spring that we get easterlies and they're not overly cold. We run out of cold air. To, to the east as spring goes on. If you want cold weather, you want a northerly wind, uh, really, in, in the spring, more so than easterly. You can get cold air from east in March, though, so eventually we could tap in some cold weather if the east was sustained for long enough. But um, really, for proper proper cold, you know, real cold in spring, it tends to be coming coming more from the north. But anyway, high pressure takes... I'm off on a tangent, so sorry, everybody. High pressure takes over uh, through the second half of March. Over Scandinavia brings the wind into an easterly direction on the GFS uh, midnight run. GFS 6Z, again, with the weather system pushed south. This was on Thursday. 
and uh, then into the weekend. Low pressure brings further spells of rain for early next week. That low pressure slip south becomes cut off around Spain. Heights rising, uh, particularly so to the east. Of the low pressure carries on trying to come in. So around day 10, the high pressure probably makes its move. Again, goes up to Scandinavia and uh, Russia, gets the wind in to the east. Once again, though, we see that there's not really much cold air sitting to our east. So we do get easterly winds, but they aren't particularly cold easterly winds. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we have high pressure taking over for a while through the third week of March. And then the Jeff S6 f wants to bring low pressure back in very, very quickly, turning us wetter and windy. So it's only a brief interval of higher pressure before we're back into more wind and rain. The GEM, again, has its weather system pushing eastwards across the country at the end of the week and into the weekend with further low pressure coming in off the Atlantic Ocean. A mist uh, carries on all the way up to day 10, so not much of a build of pressure with the GEM, just keeps it unsettled and Atlantic driven. Um, and the ECM looks like this. And by the way, if you enjoyed the video, please do smash the like button. Make sure you sub to the channel. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. And drop a comment and let us know about this and all of our videos. Thank you so much, everybody. We're trying to get to 13.3k. Uh, um, so if you can give us a sub, that would be absolutely great. Thank you so much. Uh, and tell friends and family to subscribe as well. ECM, again, on Thursday then, brings a weather system in of the Atlantic. That brings further wet and uh, windy weather with it over the end of the week and into the weekend. Early next week, the low pressure slip south becomes a cut-off low around Portugal. High pressure builds over to the east of the country. This could turn into a very mild spring sort of pattern if we get wind in from the south like the ECM is showing there. That's sort of thing that could lift temperature into mid-teens Celsius. So, from this... You know, next week, as pressure builds, don't rule out the chance that we don't get cold easters, but we get very mild south southeasterlies and uh, possibly a, a real taste of spring. By day 10, high pressure is building over sites of West Coast, pulling in a bit of a cooler northeasterly wind. But the trend is towards drier weather on most of us, except the GEM, uh, through next week. This is a precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from tometio.com. Initially dry, and then we've got rain coming in off the Atlantic over the next few days. Some quite wet weather at times, especially so for England and Wales, until heights rise around day 9, 10. You turn a bit dry. But there is a weather system that's stuck in the middle of the ridge uh, at day 10. That brings rain to central areas. These are the options on the table within the ECM Ensemble today for day 10, which gets us to the 17th of March. 16 members of the ECM Ensembles have high pressure uh, to our east and low pressure will be away to the west and northwest winds will be coming up from a southerly southwesterly direction. That's going to be uh, quite mild and will be dry in the south, wetter in the north. 11 will have high pressure over and slightly to the east of the country, low pressure away to the northwest. More influence of high pressure, that's a little bit drier, should be quite mild. And spring like 10 have low pressure in off the Atlantic. That's one of the more unsettled options, if not the most unsettled option. Uh, seven down here with low pressure to our north and high pressure to the south. That keeps us flat and westerly, wettest in the north. And then uh, number seven, cleaning control and the operation run have high pressure much more strongly towards Scandinavia and pulling the winds from an east south east direction. Telling us that the operation run today was not all that well supported actually by its ensembles at day 10. So this scenario wasn't all that well supported. Uh, in two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. We'll get us to the 22nd of March. 30 members of the ECM ensembles again with high pressure of Scandinavia. Winds coming in from an easterly direction. So that's going to be bringing uh, perhaps some quite cool weather in from uh, the east at that point. And then 21 with low pressure way to the northwest. And that will be a little bit more unsettled and rather Atlantic driven. But it should be relatively mild. Uh, so this meet you finally, and then we're done with this video. Uh, so these are 500 millibar high tonnage breakdown to meet peers. The first week period takes us from the 7th to the 13th of March. Coming week has high pressure over Scandinavia. Winds will be coming in from an easterly direction. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's not going to be overly unsettled. Into week two, which is the 14th to the 20th of March, high pressure begins to recede back eastwards. Lower pressure beginning to develop in the Atlantic, starting to turn more unsettled, particularly in the north and west, probably. 
High pressure comes back into week three, 21st, 27th of March. High pressure centered over Scandinavia. This could be bringing up quite a warm southerly, southeasterly. So, you know, quite a blast of spring there. And then week four is the 28th of March to the 3rd of April with the high pressure then right in over top of the country. Certainly no sign of any response to the stratospheric warming. Taking us back to where we started. No sign of any response to the stratospheric warming in terms of northern blocking. Um, up to that point with CFS uh, to the beginning of April. But again, we'll have to wait and see. The models, particularly CFS, not all that good at picking up at a tropospheric response to stratospheric uh, warmings. So we shall see what happens, of course. Right, if you've enjoyed the video, then please uh, can you smash that like button. Make sure you are subscribed to our channel. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Drop a comment. Let's know about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell your friends and family to subscribe as well. It's amazing. It's incredible. And thank you so much. As I said, we're trying to get ourselves to 13.3k. So if you can, give us a sub and tell your friends and family to subscribe as well. That would be uh, great. Right, then. So just tell you what's happening tomorrow. 6 a.m. upload. I'll try to get a 10 to 14 day. I've got a busy day coming up uh, tomorrow. I've got a new bed being delivered for uh, Mrs. P. So it's um, going to be an exciting day here at Gas Love is Tales uh, tomorrow. So uh, I may not be able to do a 10 to 14 day. I may not have the time. But certainly a 6 a.m forecast in the morning anyway and we'll try to attain to 14 there at some point through the day you enjoy the rest of your monday and for this video though that's all for now and thanks for watching